All right, next question we've got. A study published, this is an interesting question. A study published in the Journal of Evolution and Human Behavior found that after one hour of chopping wood, the group's testosterone levels increased by 48%, which is a higher increase than lifting weights, which is only about 20%. So would you say that we could benefit from chopping wood before certain training sessions, uh, for example, before a leg day? Um, so I actually dug this study up. Uh, it's not a, a new study. It was published in 2013. Um, so I'm not sure <laughs> where it's coming from now, but I thought it was, it was kind of interesting. The study was actually conducted conducted on, I may say this wrong, but I'm going to say Simain forager farmers. Uh, so people from Simain, which is, I think, a community in Bolivia. And according to the study, these men ranged from age 16 to 80 years old, and they already had baseline salivary testosterone levels one third lower than age matched U.S. males. And as, quote, non-industrialized populations facing energetic constraints and pathogenic stress show lower levels of testosterone across all adult ages as compared to men in industrialized nations. Um, so basically, I would say comparing the men in this study who are quite deprived to men in a Western culture who live in, in abundance as probably sort of like comparing apples and oranges, what might drive their testosterone up may not be the same as what would drive our testosterone up. So I would really take this study with a grain of salt. Uh, but with that said, I think that the broader point here, the broader question is, should we even be concerning ourselves with acute changes in testosterone around a training session. Um, and I would say probably not. Uh, this was really popular like a decade or more ago, but most of the, the recent literature has all been converging on the consensus that what we should focus on in training is progressive tension, generating more tension over time with progressive overload and all the factors I've talked about on the channel before and the sort of hormone hypothesis of muscle growth where you're trying to design your training program around these acute spikes in testosterone or growth hormone or IGF-1 or whatever's popular at the moment is kind of futile because they are so transient and because they don't take you enough out of the, the physio normal physiological range for it to produce any significant impact on muscle growth. This has been shown in a study by Dr. Brad Schoenfeld and by Dr. Stu Phillips and pretty much every expert in the field at this point has, has come to pretty much unanimous agreement that this isn't something that you want to concern yourself with. Now, obviously that isn't to say that testosterone isn't anabolic. It clearly is, but you need to look at prolonged elevation in elevations in testosterone. And then also you need to consider where your baseline level of testosterone is. Um, so the natural physiological range is actually a really broad range. So it goes from around 300 nanograms per deciliter all the way up to a thousand nanograms per deciliter or around there. Um, so let's just imagine you're down reasonably low, but still healthy, so around 300. Taking yourself up to, let's say, five or 600 through lifestyle changes like, you know, getting more sleep or whatever uh, is probably going to have a positive impact on like your training performance and perhaps your, your muscle mass as well. But it has to be a prolonged elevation. And it just isn't clear in the literature how much of a modification in the normal range is required to see differences on a physique level. So let's say you currently sit somewhere in the 600 range. Will going up to the 800 range or the 900 range make a difference? I really don't know, but I doubt it's going to be much of a difference. What we know makes a big difference is if you inject testosterone, then you go well up above 1,000 nanograms per deciliter, and that's when you start to see huge changes in body composition, muscle mass performance, uh, etc. So this transient spike in uh, Bolivian uh, 16 to 80 year olds uh, from wood chopping isn't something I'd uh, extrapolate to, to your own training. But even further than that, I wouldn't do little things like training with certain exercises or at certain times of day with the goal of increasing testosterone or, or any other hormone for that matter. All right, next question. So you mentioned in a previous video that you were planning on reading 50 books this year. What books have you read so far and which ones do you plan on reading later this year and why? Um, so already, I'm a little bit behind, but I'm getting caught up. Uh, so the first book I read, you guys have heard me talk about this before, uh, The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, probably one of my all-time favorite books as of now. And now I'm currently reading the Harry Potter series. Uh, so I just finished Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, 
and now I'm currently on number two. And then after that, I've been on a bit of a crime kick lately, so I've been watching a bunch of documentaries on O.J. Simpson, and I watched the Making a Murderer series on Netflix, so I may get a few books to do with that. Big Stephen King fan, and I like kind of like detective novels as well, so anyway, I'll keep you guys posted on all the books I plan on reading, and that's gonna bring me to the end of the Q&A, and before we go, I have to give a huge thank you to our sponsor, Audible, for sponsoring this video. Audible is, in my opinion, the only way I'm gonna be able to get through 50 books this year. Uh, I find audiobooks to just be the most convenient way to get a bunch of reading in. If I'm on my way to the gym or just lying in the bed, I'll just plug in the audiobook and bang out a couple chapters really very easily. Yeah, Audible is a great service. If you guys would like to get started with your own 30-day free trial, you can go to audible.com forward slash Jeff Nippard, or you can text Jeff Nippard to 500-500. So thank you so much, Audible, for sponsoring the video, showing your support on the channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a like if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you happen to be new, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.